There's this place in Canada where you'll find Rocky Mountain peaks, turquoise glacial lakes, and some of the most scenic drives in the world. All of these things come together along the borders of Alberta and British Columbia, where you're gonna find Banff, Jasper, and Yoho, three of Canada's most beautiful national parks. I was searching for an open door. I was looking for a peace of mind. It's a feeling that I tend to get. So to give you a bit of a backstory behind this trip, earlier this year, it had dawned on me that I hadn't seen my buddies from high school in quite some time. Last month, we had touched base and we realized that we all had some free time coming at the end of July. So we decided, why not make a road trip out of it, do some camping and go and explore one of the most beautiful places in the world that just so happens to be a couple hours from our house. This is going to be a video of that trip detailing how we went about traveling Banff, Jasper and Yoho National Park. Are you stoked? So stoked. Camping. We're in a sick Dodge Caravan minivan with stow and go seats. So we have tons of room for everything. So it's not only a soccer mom van, it's a boys van. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna for say. The boys. We picked the van up early in the morning in Kelowna, BC, and then we drove six hours until we hit Yoho National Park where we would do some exploring and camp our first night. We ended up arriving in Yoho just after 3 p.m., which was a bit later than we would have liked, but it still worked. Our first stop was right after we entered Yoho, and that was a 20 minute leisurely hike down to Wapta Falls. Making our way through the forest, we were eventually greeted with a massive blue river rolling over a huge waterfall in the middle of the mountains. I mean, this is not a bad first stop. After taking in some of the beautiful views at Wapta Falls, which we're going to be doing a lot of this trip, we ended up hopping back in the minivan and heading over to the iconic Emerald Lake. Emerald Lake is part of Yoho National Park, and it's that lake that you've probably seen like 5 million photos of on Instagram. This picturesque blue lake is surrounded by gorgeous mountains and some hiking trails. Now, the dudes and I did not partake as we had other places to be, but we did hear good things about the trails. We spent some time wandering around the lake, checking out the Emerald Lake Lodge, once again taking in the beautiful views, and watching our friend Zach go for a swim. It's a glacial lake, you probably don't want to swim in there. After Emerald Lake, we were ready to head to our final stop in Yoho National Park, and that was going to be the Paget Fire Hut. The Paget Fire Hut is a tiny wooden shack located on top of a mountain with some insane views of the surrounding ranges and lakes. What makes the fire hut so cool is how isolated you feel when you're up there. Sitting high above the valley lakes in line with the other snow-capped peaks, this makes for such an unreal spot to catch the sunset. Now, to get to the Paget Fire Hut is fairly simple. First off, you're going to head over to the Great Divide Lodge in Yoho National Park. Once you're there, you can park your car in their parking lot so long as you make sure to drop off your keys at the hotel reception. They'll hold your car keys for you while you're hiking, and once you get back down off the trail, you can just pick them back up. After sorting out the car situation, the dudes and I, we threw some dinner in our backpacks, packed up what we need to hang out there for sunset, and began climbing the one and a half hour hike to the top. The hike isn't too bad actually. There is a fair bit of incline on the way up. I mean, obviously we're climbing pretty high, but even if you hike occasionally, you should be fine. I don't know, there's just something about this spot that I find really special. Having hiked up a mountain to be isolated in a tiny wooden shack where you can watch the sunset while cooking some dinner and hanging out with some friends, it's a really good time. I really, really enjoyed this spot. And if you're passing through Yoho National Park, it's one of those things that you cannot miss. Yesterday's activities really tired us out. After a good night's sleep, we woke up early in Banff, ready to take on our next adventure-filled day. We have made it here to the town of Banff in Alberta. Now my friends and I ended up camping at Tunnel Mountain, which is the main campsite located just outside of Banff city center, but it is extremely, extremely hard to get a reservation at without booking very far in advance. We honestly hit a stroke of luck. We had no plans going into Banff and we happened to secure a spot there for two days, but the park ranger who sold it to us told us that we are like, beyond lucky. For those of you looking to come to Banff, make sure that you're booking far in 
advance and trying to find that spot. So here we are on our next adventure. We are hitting up Lake Louise. This is so popular. I'm sure you've seen pictures of it before. It's like iconic in Banff. Zach claims he saw a grizzly bear on her drive here. Oh no, I did and I'm afraid now. <laughs> it's only been about one minute of driving since I saw it and it was velociraptor this way. <laughs> You've probably heard of this lake as it's arguably one of the most famous lakes in Canada and rightfully so. It is absolutely gorgeous. Now it's kind of unfortunate because it is so beautiful, it's also extremely popular. And with that, there are tons of crowds. You can definitely go earlier in the morning or later in the evening if you wanna dodge those crowds, which I recommend doing because the crowds, like that alone made it not my favorite stop that we had. It's so beautiful, you have to see it. If you're in Banff, you can't skip it. But Lake Louise, because of the crowds, was not my favorite. After Lake Louise, we headed back towards Banff, stopping at Johnston Canyon. Johnston Canyon is another one of the super iconic spots in Banff National Park. It's a large canyon located in the mountains with some waterfalls running through it, and the park has built a series of paths and walkways so you can explore it relatively easily. We ended up taking a path that followed up the canyon over waterfalls through the forest, eventually bringing you to the end where the biggest waterfall in Johnston Canyon is visible. All in all, the round trip hike took us about an hour and it was a super cool way to explore the area. It's our third day exploring Banff and today we are waking up early. It was 3.45 in the morning, we all got up and we packed into the minivan and headed to one of our favorite spots on the entire trip for sunrise and that was Moraine Lake. Now you probably know, but getting up before 4 a.m. is extremely painful, but trust me, in this situation it's definitely worth it. Moraine Lake is situated in the Valley of Ten Peaks, which is located about 14 kilometers into the mountains from Lake Louise. This glacial lake is bright blue, surrounded by trees and snow-capped mountains. It's honestly the perfect place for sunrise. Jason, dude, where are we at? Uh, some Lake Moraine, and this water is so blue. Are you usually up at this hour? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Was it worth it? Yeah, million dollar uh, pictures here. Yeah, dude. It's pretty, pretty. You don't see this every day, for sure. It's pretty crazy. When you're there and the sun begins to rise and it shines down the valley, it begins to light up the peaks surrounding the lake in a bright orange color. It's unreal. On top of the gorgeous sunrise, another huge perk about being there early is that it's not crowded. Moraine Lake is a massive destination in Banff and being so close to Lake Louise, it gets extremely busy early on in the day. They actually end up closing the road to get there fairly early in the morning, which means the only way in is going to be via shuttle. So I don't know, in my opinion, it's worth it to bite the bullet, get up early and catch one of the most magnificent sunrises you'll see there. After catching sunrise at Moraine Lake, we hopped back on the highway and then took the exit towards the Icefields Parkway, which is consistently rated as one of the most beautiful drives in the world. I saw you in the The Icefields Parkway is a 230 kilometer stretch of highway that connects Banff and Jasper. We knew that we wanted to see Jasper, so we took this highway to get there, but we definitely did not understand how beautiful this highway actually was. If you do the Icefields straight through, you can probably do that stretch of road in about three and a half hours, but my friends and I took about 10. The cool part of the highway is that no matter where you look, at any time you're going to be greeted with an insane view. Seriously, if I stop for pictures every time I wanted to take a picture, I think that we might still be on the ice fields. So I guess there's a bear out here, and uh, yeah, it's like causing complete traffic jam on the road because everyone's like, wants to see it. Oh dude, it's right there. On top of the amazing 360 degree views for 230 kilometers, the Icefields Parkway also has a ton of destinations that you're gonna to wanna to stop at. And when I say a ton of places, you're going to have to pick and choose. There's seriously too many to stop at every single one. But that goes for all the places that we've been so far. It's so beautiful that you have to make some compromises. One of our favorite stops along the way was Peyto Lake. Peyto Lake is super well known and it actually makes a really good stop for lunch. 
from the parking lot, you can actually hike up to the viewpoint in about 20 minutes and you're greeted with this bright blue lake surrounded by super tall cascading mountains. Now to the best of my knowledge, you're not going to be able to get down to Peta Lake, at least not easily, but from the viewpoint, it's in a valley and you get a super cool view of it. Another spot that I absolutely loved was Horseshoe Lake. And the cool thing about Horseshoe Lake is that it's not known by many people. Horseshoe Lake is located just outside of Jasper and it makes for a really good swimming spot. We hung out there for a bit, Mike and I did some swimming, we jumped off some small cliffs, and then Mike decided, you know what, he's gonna do a 50 foot cliff jump. <laughs> Horseshoe Lake is pretty cool. This is definitely one of my favorite stops along the ice fields. After our extended trip up the ice fields parkway, we ended up in Jasper, which is a super cool little town. About 10 minutes from Jasper city center is a lake called Pyramid Lake, which is where we decided that we were going to have our picnic dinner as a pretty good spot. Honestly, if we could do it over again and we had this same timeline, I think I only would have camped one night in Banff and we would have camped the other night here in Jasper. That would have given us some more time to explore and see what Jasper had to offer. But because we drove up there and we spent so much time on the ice fields, which you definitely need to do, by the time you get there, the sun is setting and then you have to drive all the way back to Banff, which is another like four hour straight drive. I mean, that's why you're watching this video and I did the trip. It was definitely a mistake on my part. We should have camped there, but hey, you live and you learn. It was still a super fun time. Let the truth be known. And there it is, dudes. That is how you spend three epic days on the road exploring Banff, Jasper, and Yoho National Park. As I said earlier, there is honestly so much to see in these parks, we had to make so many compromises, and when you're there, you'll see the same thing. There's literally signs for waterfalls and hikes and lakes, like left and right, no matter where you look, and you can't possibly do everything. I mean, that's why these are national parks. They truly are something special, and I'll definitely be going back for years to come with new things to see each and every time. With that being said though, my friends Steve, Brett, and David all helped me put this itinerary together and they've been visiting Banff, Jasper, and Yoho for years. So they know what they're talking about. I'll put all their links in the description. Thank you so much guys. You guys helped me plan an amazing trip for my friends and I. Thanks so much for watching dudes. I appreciate every single one of you so much and I'll see you all in another one.